Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here, and uh, today I'm starting uh, a little bit of an experiment. Uh, I want to start uh, making more videos about League of Legends, uh, I want it to be gameplay, theory crafting, all that good stuff, and um, so yeah, this is the first of that, and long may it continue. Um, now, what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about Xerath. Um, recently, in the past few weeks, uh, in OGM preseason, and uh, also at IEM, San Jose, we started to see kind of the rise of Zarath and a lot of Zarath picks in the mid lane to varying degrees of success. Um, and I want to have a look at Zarath as a champion, um, look at his kit, look at the meta, uh, and see how he fits in uh, in the current state of the game and see if he really is a strong pick because um, a lot of teams are putting high priority on him and it doesn't always seem justified. It sometimes does, but it doesn't always. So, um, Let's crack straight into it, and the first uh, thing I want to talk about are the, the pros when it comes to Zerath. So his, his, his good points, his, his, uh, his pluses. The most obvious of those, and one that I think everybody will initially associate with Zerath, uh, would be his long range. Zerath has over 1000 range on every single one of his spells. Uh, his Q is 1400 range. Now. I, on a normal cast ability, like aside from an ultimate, like that's absolutely insane range. Um, and that is one of the reasons he could possibly be seen as a meta pick. I mean, not even as a meta pick, but he at the very least fits a, fits a niche uh, of, of very, very long range champions. And I think that's very important to think about his range, because if you look at other champions that used to fit in that niche of extremely long range champions, Nidalee, and Ziggs would be the two that I would think of instantly. Um, Nidalee got reworked. We've seen a little bit of her played AP in top lane and in solo queue by some mid laners, but we haven't really, really seen her rise as a meta pick in the mid lane again as, as AP. Uh, and Ziggs had little nerfs. Other champions came to the forefront like Zerath, and Ziggs seems to have fallen out of favour. So if you want a long range AP champion in the mid lane, Ziggs pretty much seems like the only route to go down. I mean, the only other really long-range poke champion in mid that's meta is Jace, and if you don't want AD, then Zerath is the only champion, really, that's left. Um, next up is his damage. Now, <clears throat> I didn't obviously go through every single champion in the game and look at their damage uh, t to figure this out, but if you add up Zerath's base damage, think about the fact that every single one of his abilities does damage, um, which not all champions can say, and uh, if you add up all of his abilities, his base damage at level 18 is 1610. Now, if you get enough penetration, that's pretty close to true damage on squishy champions. If you hit a full combo on a squishy champion, you're doing three quarters of their health. Easy. Next up is his scaling. 339% total scaling. There are very, very few champions in the game that have as good scaling with ability power as Xerath does. Essentially, if you want to nuke something from 100 to 0, there's very few champions that can do it as well as Xerath can. He has incredible burst, he has incredible overall damage, and that, I think, is definitely something you can put to his advantage. In terms of mid laners, he's not going to get out damaged by very many picks at the moment. Let's move on to his laning phase, or a particular portion of his laning phase. Now, recently we saw a big rework of health and mana regeneration with the new season. Uh, we saw a big hit to Athene's massive nerf on its mana regen, although it did get slightly buffed in this patch. Xerath's passive is incredibly useful in the laning phase. Late game it becomes... Mm, it's still nice in the late game, but it's not as impactful as it is in laning. In laning phase, he has incredible mana regeneration with this passive. Um, you hit an auto, you get a load of free mana regen. Um, admittedly, if you want to make get the best use of this passive, you have to auto champions, and uh, that's not always possible. But um, because of the fact that mana regeneration has been nerfed, and he has a passive which is specifically geared towards me, mana regeneration, you have to see this as a buff for Zerath. The fact that the items got nerfed, Zerath stayed the same. In terms of mana regen, that's a net buff for Zerath, and that's all it can be seen as. Um, and with all of this kind of rolled together, Zerath, on the surface, appears to fit the meta pretty well. 
Um, Pope champions are incredibly strong right now. Zerath, Jace, huge champions. Zerath obviously fits the, the Pope meta probably better than anyone right now. Team fights are incredibly important, and Zerath is a pretty strong team fight champion as well. He's got lots of AoE, he's got lots of damage, he's got utility in the form of a slow and a stun. And early game is slightly less punishing in this meta, because, because early game junglers are not as common. Uh, early ganks are more difficult to pull off with the punishing jungle clears. Zerath gets a free ride. A little bit longer into the game. Zarath was always one where if you could apply lots of early pressure to him, he actually struggled. Um, early game is, is, is a lot less pressuring at the moment. Um, there's not as many early game junglers and the ganks aren't as strong right now. Um, so now we've looked at all of his pros, you probably would think he's a pretty strong champion, probably think he fits the meta pretty well. We have to look at his cons, because Zarath has a few very, very big cons to him that I can see. Uh, and the first, and again, probably the most obvious that people would think of, is he's incredibly immobile. Um, with the game progressing the way it is, mobility creep has always been seen as quite a big problem in League of Legends, where mobility was starting to become so common that champions without mobility struggled to find a niche in the meta. Um, I mean, we all remember old Nidalee when she was broken. We all remember LeBlanc before her silence got nerfed. We all know about Ari and Zed. I mean, in the mid lane over the past two seasons, I would say, the champions that consistently have remained towards the top of the meta uh, have consistently been incredibly mobile champions. Uh, we see LeBlanc's making a comeback. I mean, I don't think she ever should have really left. I don't think she really ever went anywhere, but... That's besides the point. Um, we see Ari picked relatively commonly. Zed's always been a high priority pick. Um, and this is something Zarath doesn't have in his arsenal, which one puts him at a disadvantage in lanes with mobility. So, you know, instantly the fact that he's less mobile, other champions are more mobile, that puts him at a disadvantage. Uh, but also it makes him very vulnerable to pressure in the mid lane, very vulnerable to ganks, very vulnerable to support roams, which are particularly meta right now. And the fact that objectives are so important, if Zerath gets caught around an objective, he's pretty pretty screwed. Um, I mean, Zerath will take two defensive summoners anyway, most of the time, to try and make up for this. But when you've got your flash on a 300 second cooldown, uh, barrier on a 210 second cooldown, I believe it is, you can't basically afford to get caught at any point. Because if your flash is down definitely for a team fight, then that's a big problem for Zerath. Um... And so I think his immobility is, is a huge problem. Um, if we want to compare him to another champion that was... I mean, the two other champions that I mentioned earlier, uh, Nidalee and Ziggs, both of them had at least some form of mobility. Nidalee was incredibly mobile, and that was part of her problem and why she was she was too strong and needed a nerf. Um, Ziggs had, his, uh, had his, his satchel, which was actually a pretty decent escape tool if you could use it correctly, because you could knock someone else away, it was AoE, and you also could create a gap. So it was a, it was a dash for you, but also um, you could create a larger gap by knocking someone else back. The next problem uh, with Zerath, and one that I don't think can be understated or underestimated, is the fact that he's an entirely skill shot based champion. Now, I know a lot of people will... I think a lot of people would probably say that that wasn't a problem, especially if you're looking at the pro scene, uh, or if you're looking even at high elo uh, solo queue. I don't think that can be said to be the case at all. Um, if we want to compare him to Ziggs, for example, yeah, Ziggs was, was an entirely skillshot champion, but what Ziggs had going for him was that he had the minefield was more of a zoning tool than anything else. It was a pretty easy skill shot to hit. W, relatively easy to hit as well. Ultimate, very slow moving, but incredible AoE, so it wasn't that difficult to hit. Um, whereas Zerath's spells are all particularly difficult to hit, I think. Now, this is a little bit more of a subjective point. Not the fact it's all skill shots. That is completely, you know, that's a fact. And I think that's something that you have to count against him. But I think they're much more difficult to hit than other champions. And the fact that his... The, the way his play pattern kind of goes is the fact that Nidalee could throw a spear, run away. Ziggs can kind of chuck bombs from miles away and not really give 
you know, two hoots about it. Um, Zerath is, yeah, about poking with Q, but once you kind of get to a team fight, it hit, it becomes very difficult to position and um, to get those skill shots off in the correct way. And uh, I, I think this is definitely something that uh, that affects Zarath and makes him makes him a bit of a riskier pick, at the very least. Um, I don't think you can say it hurts his viability completely. I don't think um, it'll make him completely unviable. But I, I remember an argument made against Ziggs before he got his buffs, which made him, him meta, was the fact that he was so skill shot reliant. And um, even AP Cogmore mid... Uh, which was tried to not great success by uh, by Link on CLG, but was was played with reasonable success in Korea. Faker in particular played particularly well on that champion. The reason AP Cogmore isn't really seen as a viable pick for a number of reasons. In fact, similar reasons to Zerath, immobility, uh, skill shot based. I think the fact that Cogmore is considered not viable and Zerath is, you have to look at the two champions and compare and kind of say that in all honesty, there's a lot of similarities there. Um, these two points, the fact that he's immobile and the fact that he is very skill shot reliant, leaves him vulnerable to a lot of meta champs like Ari, LeBlanc and Zed, like I said beforehand. Zerath struggles a hell of a lot in lane against these kind of champions who are incredibly high priority picks and very strong picks at the moment. Um, I mean, we saw Bjergsen get torn to pieces uh, by first LeBlanc and then even a Syndra who's not particularly... Nope, I'm wrong. It was just the LeBlanc he played uh, into the Zerath. That was my bad. Um, but we saw him get destroyed by LeBlanc into Zerath, and that's an incredibly poor matchup for Zerath. Um, as LeBlanc, you can dodge, theoretically, up to two of his abilities. Um, you've got incredible bursts. You can gap close. Zerath struggles against all these kind of things. Ari's exactly the same thing. Um, you know, she's got gap close. She's got CC. Uh, to lock down Zerath if he gets caught out of position. Zed, everyone knows that if you get stuck out of position against the Zed, then he's going to wire you and you're going to die. I think the fact that Zerath is so weak in lane, particularly against so many meta champion, champions, in an era when jungle interference is a little bit less common, just because of the way the jungle goes, it's more punishing... You, you, a lot of junglers have to back after their first clear and you have to back more often in the jungle. I think this is something that in this meta, more than possibly previous metas, will punish Zerath pretty heavily because he can't necessarily get as much jungle help in very tough matchups. Another problem with Zerath, particularly in lanes like this, is he... Zerath needs items. Um, a current build is Morella Nomicon into Void Staff and that brings his power spike forward a little bit, but not... <laughs> it does bring his power spike forward pretty significantly because it's quite a cheap build and it's only two items. But the biggest problem with Zerath is realistically, in an optimal world, you want Rabadon's Death Cap, you want Athene's or Morella Nomicon, currently probably still Morella Nomicon, and you want Void Staff. You want three items before Zerath really hits critical mass. If you look at other popular mid laners, Zed, Bork Brutalizer. And that's his big, that's his big mid game spike. You look at LeBlanc; she pretty much only needs one item, DFG or Morello, and she's she's a massive threat already. Ari, DFG or Morello, already a huge threat. Zerath is more item reliant in the mid lane, I think, than other other champions, um, because he is so damage heavy. He needs lots of items and damage to be effective. Um, yeah, he's got really good base damages if he hits everything. But if he doesn't, and if he's going to be poking with that Q, he needs that Q to be doing a decent amount of damage. Q's on a relatively long cooldown as well. Zerath is pretty item reliant. And, and I mean, let, uh, let's talk about maybe even four items Zerath needs, because maybe he even needs a Zonyas before he's really, really comfortable. And all of these, all of these cons, immobile, skill shots, vulnerable in lane, needs items, they make him... All of this adds up to make an incredibly unforgiving champion. Um, sorry, my notes just disappeared from my screen. Zarath doesn't forgive mistakes. If you get out of position, you're immobile, you die. Uh, you're all skill shots, so if your skill shots are off that game, you do no damage. He's vulnerable to meta champions in, the, in laning. You make a mistake in a laning phase, you die, you get snowballed on. We saw it happen to Bjergsen, the best mid laner in the West probably over the last year. 
He needs items. If you get behind, if you get caught out, if you get behind in lane to these champions, you can't afford these items. And we've seen it happen to Froggen at IAM. We saw it happen to Bjergsen at IAM, where he had an incredibly, where they both had incredibly ineffective games. We've also seen over in OGM preseason, Kuro had an incredible game on Zerath and was playing very well. So it's not like Zerath is in, is a champion that's always going to flop. But coming wrapping up towards the end of this video and, and trying to kind of make an assessment for myself, um, if I'm honest, I think Zerath's an incredibly risky pick right now. I think he fits the meta in a lot of ways. But just the nature of him as a champion makes him very high risk, very high reward. And I think that he is being seen as too staple of a pick. I think you need to build a composition around him. I think you need to dedicate your jungler to sitting mid to keep him alive and get him rolling. Um, I think you need some peel and disengage to have him work on the team. And I, I, I feel like teams are picking him a little bit too quickly when I think he's definitely more situational than than the picks would suggest at the moment uh, and so yeah that's my thoughts on Zarath uh, like comment favorite subscribe if you enjoyed it and uh, I'll do more of these videos thanks guys